Good morning. Perry Floyd here on March 30th. Uh, I'm the pastor of Vineyard Church, Albuquerque, and I've got a word for us today. I know you've been reading the Bible, and today let me encourage you, since it's the 30th of the month, Proverbs 30, one of my favorite passages is in there. <clears throat> Mark chapter 8 and Romans chapter 8, and as you read, reflect. Ask God what he's saying. I love Psalm 119 verse 18. Open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things from your law. As you read, ask God to open your heart, open your eyes, so that you can see what he wants to say to you today. I've been talking about how to respond in crisis, and it's been small. It's been, what do I do? Today, I've got a big word, something for us, something for the church that is, uh, I think, urgent, and that we have a responsibility as the body of Christ to respond to what God said in his word. You remember the story of David and Solomon. And so in 2 Chronicles chapter 7 is one of the most well-known passages for Christians in America. David kicked butt and took names for 40 years. He expanded Israel to the east, to the north, to the south, and had peace all around, and then handed that over to his son, Solomon. David built his own palace, and then when he attempted to build a house for God, the prophet was told, tell him no, let his son do that. And so Solomon took on the building project of building God's house, the temple. And so he spent probably tens or hundreds of millions of dollars in our money building God's house. And when he had finished, he brought everybody together. They had a fast and they dedicated the temple. And as soon as Solomon dedicated it, and prayed, the glory of the Lord fill the temple. And then God spoke. And most of us know Second Chronicles 7, 14. But let me read the verses in front of that. Here's what God said after Solomon dedicated the temple. The Lord appeared to Solomon in the night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up the heavens so there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people. If my people, who are called by my name, humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Pestilence was part of the issue. When a plague, when a disease comes, it's time for God's people to not ask why, to not even ask who, but to say, what do we do? How do we respond? And we respond in three ways. We humble ourselves. We pray. We seek God's face, and we turn from our wicked ways. This is a time for us not to point a finger at anybody other than ourselves, to repent of our ways, to ask God to heal our land, America, and to forgive our sins, our idolatries, are putting people and things and our own pursuits and our own goals and ambitions above God, His Son, and His kingdom. And I believe that we need to be on our knees right now, confessing our sins as church and saying, God, heal our land. Heal our land. Would you stop this COVID-19? Would you supernaturally do your work and stay your hand so that Religious freedom, which is the main thing America is known for around the world. Anybody can worship freely here. And with our economic issues and our health issues, all of that is at risk. We must pray. Let me show you how I'm praying, and I want to pray for you. God, we thank you that your sovereign hand is still in charge. And no matter how it's happened, we're in a mess. And so as your people... We confess that we've been far more interested in our own comfort than in your kingdom. We confess our sins of putting others in front of you, of chasing our own dreams rather than your dream. Oh God, have mercy on us. Forgive our sins as a church and heal our land. We pray for our leaders, for our mayors, our governors, and especially for our president and his Congress, that they would do wise wise things, that the choices they make would help and not hinder. <clears throat> oh God, heal our land. And as each one of us, Lord, falls to our knees and appeals to you for mercy, 
we ask for you to touch our land and to heal us and to allow the gospel to go forth. Thank you for the good news, Lord Jesus. Thank you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you join me in praying that every day until we see this crisis averted? Would you, like me, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and see everything else become strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace? Praying because I have to and because I need to. I'm Perry Floyd.